Hello, my name is Shane Yates, and today I am going to be intertexting two pieces. For the first one is a speech done uh, done by Emma Gonzalez in 2018 after the Stoneman Douglas uh, High School school shooting. And then for my second piece is a Fox News article that was published April 3rd, 2023. This is titled, DeSantis Signature Tips U.S. into Majority Constitutional Carry Nation with New Florida Gun Rights Law. And in the Fox News article, I do, um, the director, the director of the NRA, um, Randy Ko Kozak was quoted throughout, so I will be using those quotes as well. Um, these two texts contradict each other because one is very pro-gun and then the other is very anti-gun, pushing for stricter gun laws. And I have put together a performance that contrasts, um, parts of the text and that, I'm going to be performing that for you today, so I'm just going to get started. Every single person up here today, all these people should be at home grieving, but instead we are up here standing together because if all our government and president can do is send thoughts and prayers, then it's time for the victims to be the change that we need to see. Since the time of the Founding Fathers and since they added the Second Amendment to the Constitution, our guns have developed at a rate that leaves me dizzy. The guns have changed, but the laws have not. The NRA applauds Florida for becoming the 26th state to adopt the vital constitutional carry legislation. This NRA spearheaded initiative empowers Floridians to exercise their Second Amendment rights without underdue bureaucratic barriers, affirming the fundamental right to self-defense. We certainly do not understand why it should be harder to make plans with friends on the weekends than to buy an automatic or semi-automatic weapon. In Florida, to buy a gun, you do not need a permit, you do not need a gun license, and once you buy it, you do not need to register it. You do, you do not need a permit to carry a concealed rifle or shotgun. You can buy as many guns as you want at one time. I read something very powerful to me today. It was from the point of view of a teacher. And I quote, when adults tell me I have the right to own a gun, all I can hear is my right to own a gun outweighs your student's right to live. All I hear is mine, mine, mine. We thank Governor DeSantis for his support of self-defense and Second Amendment laws and for prioritizing the safety and security of Florida residents. The historic moment is a testament to the dedication of the NRA, our members, gun owners, and the Second Amendment supporters working together in the state. Today, NRA's victory inspires us to continue advocating for constitutional carry laws across the nation ensuring the protection of Second Amendment rights for all Americans. The people in the government who are voted into power are lying to us, and us kids seem to be the only ones who notice and our parents to call BS. Companies trying to make caricatures of teenagers these days saying that all we are is self-involved, trend-obsessed, and they push us into submission when our message doesn't reach the ears of the nation. We are prepared to call BS. Politicians who sit in their gilded house and senate seats funded by the NRA telling us nothing could have been done to prevent this, we call BS. They say together gun laws do not decrease gun violence, we call BS. They say good guy with a gun stops a bad guy with a gun, we call BS. They say guns are just tools like knives and are as dangerous as cars, we call BS. They say no laws could have prevented the hundreds of senseless tragedies that have occurred, we call BS. That us kids don't know what we're talking about, and we're too young to understand how the government works. We call BS. We extend our gratitude to the Florida legislator and all those who have worked tirelessly to make this a reality in the sun sunshine state. Republicans in the state argued over the last few months that the bill would pr further protect the residents and families from potential crimes, while also continuing to advance Second Amendment freedom. So for my two performance choices, um, I try to pick out text in each source that um, in my, for my performance that were powerful and so that the audience felt the effects of both. I got this idea from Gray on page 213 and he says, intertextualizing can be particularly effective if you use text the audience is already familiar with. The juxtaposing of individual lines, phrases, and sentences can transform the world, sense, and most definitely the effect of both texts. And then for my second performance choice I made, um, 
for Emma Gonzalez's part, I try to um, make it strong and powerful um, because in the article, this article done by Chris Toganetti, he says that it was a deeply emotional, emotional and powerful speech to witness. So I wanted to try to do that um, as much justice as I could. Um, and then something that we can learn about being human from, especially from Emma Gonzalez's speech, is that age does not dictate bravery. Um, in the speech, she was only 17, and she was standing for the lives of her classmates and those who continue to be affected by gun violence. Um, so I thought, I like going back to my performance choice, I really wanted to make that as powerful as possible. And this is an issue that everyone in America is familiar with, which is why I thought it'd be a good idea to interdict these two. This performance includes two texts that contradict each other on the issues of gun laws and gun violence. Interdicting these two pieces help give power and produce a message for the audience on this issue. And then that is all I have for today. So thank you.